Terry Paddock. I am, uh, as I said before, delighted to be here to be able to share this on, in conversation with uh, the wonderful Kate Kerrigan, whose performance uh, and life story you all just enjoyed so much that you've stayed on. So just before we start, um, uh, I do just say I will get the ball rolling, but we've, gone, we've only got about half an hour, and it's going to be so much more interesting if most of the questions come from the audience. Whoever's controlling the lights, if you could just lift the house lights a little bit, that would be really helpful. Uh, thank you. Um, so uh, all I ask, audience, is that once I send the questioning over to you, that you do uh, raise your hand and wait for me to call on you before you just shout out your question. And to get you... Um, used to raising your hand, and so Kate and I can get to know you first a little bit better, I have some questions for you. Uh, so audience, uh, who amongst you are on social media? Anyone on social media? Fantastic, fantastic. Okay, so uh, please do get out your phones, turn them on, keep them on silent, take photos, clips, whatever you like, help spread the word about the show. It's already a huge hit here at the White Bear Theatre, and it's sold out all of its original dates this week, but it has added an additional week uh, so next week there are tickets available and we want to sell them fast, fast, fast. Um, so make sure that you uh, tag Kate, uh, the producer, uh, Circus 250 and the White Bear Theater. These are the Twitter handles, um, but uh, other social media does exist. Um, if you are on Twitter, um, X, whatever we're calling it, um, I'm also on that one um, and I'm Terry Paddock and if you tag me as well, I will share. Everyone got that? There we go. Right, wonderful. And Kate's on it all. She's all over it. Um, okay, uh, right, who in this audience stuck with Women's Irish Network members? Uh, yes, if you would. So, uh, hands up, who is Irish in this audience? Okay. <laughs> who is first generation? Second generation? Wow. <laughs> Something else entirely. <laughs> Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. Okay, okay, okay. Lined up afterwards. Everyone. Yes, yeah, everyone. Everyone. Um, and uh, who's got a question they already know they want to ask? Okay, you're feeling shy. I'm going to warm you up. That's what I'm here for. Fabulous. But don't be shy because this invariably happens. We get to the end. I say we've only got time for one more question, and then all the hands go up, and it's very normal. Um, Kate. Hello. Uh, first of all, this isn't how I planned to start until I got the call that you had an accident, but um, well done. Dr. Theater kicked Thank in you. for you. Yeah, yeah. Um, but is there... <laughs> what, what happened? Uh, oh, I was... Well, I came out... It was a bit of a luck in the Irish thing because I came over um, two weeks ago to promote the show to meet the... Um, to meet the, uh, the London correspondent of the Irish Times for a breakfast interview. And I was just over for 24 hours, and I, on my way to meet him on the tube, I just tripped on a paving stone and um, landed on my wrist and cut my wrist in half. Oh my gosh. And uh, ended up in uh, in A and E. Yeah. Um, coming back from, uh, I have to say, one of the most awesome uh, ketamine trips. <laughs> <laughs> my, son, my son will never recover from it. I was, I behaved like really, really badly. And then they put me under general anaesthetic, and that meant that I couldn't go home. So um, yeah, I've been in London like for the last for, for the last few weeks. But it's been kind of it's been kind of good being in London and connecting with people and connecting, you know, with my London Irishness mm -hmm. and my Londonness because I am very much like I live in rural Ireland, mm -hmm. you know, um, and. Uh, that's very much like my life over there, so it's quite nice to be here for like a few weeks. So is there anything yeah. you miss about London? <laughs> <laughs> Josh? <laughs> no, you don't have to answer that. <laughs> um, uh, okay, so I have to, oh, by the way, are you right-handed or left-handed? Oh, I'm right. Oh, thank goodness. Thank goodness. Yeah. I was really yeah. worried yeah, when yeah. you were fumbling yeah, yeah. the yeah. cups and everything. <laughs> I thought, oh, that's a nightmare. <laughs> Um, okay, so where how I did intend to start before that was to, as an American with US-UK dual nationality and somebody who's lived here for 30 years and also always still gets the 
uh, question. Uh, thank you. As the poster says, that this play is not just for all of you Irish people in the audience, but it's also for anyone who's ever been asked, where are you really from? <laughs> uh, that includes me. So yeah. thank you very much. Um, um, and, and it's interesting also with accents, because I can't get rid of this accent either. Um, yeah, and, yeah and, I, and, and I don't understand people who can, and what, that really spoke to me, the line that you said about, you know, what am I supposed to do with it? It's, um, I still get accused by Americans of putting on an English British accent. British accent, yeah. oh yeah. yeah. Uh, and by um, uh, English, British people all the time saying, but you haven't lost it. Yeah, yeah. And sometimes I also get accused of being Irish. I don't know if it's like a mid-Atlantic thing. Do I sound at all Irish? No, but you know. I think she could pass. No, I don't. Yeah. Um, but so uh, we have heard your incredible story, but I don't think we heard much about how you just why you decided to write about the story, having written so successfully fiction. Why did you yeah. want to write an autobiographical? Piece? Well, this is something that's been kind of knocking around in my head for quite a long time because it's very much, um, it, it's just. It's very much at the heart of who I am. Mm -hmm. And I think when you're a writer, you're always, it, it's kind of like, it's a lifelong process of just kind of scraping back at things that mean something to you, mm -hmm. do you know? And I think that the show, you know, Am I Irish Yet? The Question, it's something that came up for me about seven years ago. I was um, giving a talk on, um, I was giving a talk on being a plastic paddy <laughs> at the Heinrich Boll, um, school, uh, a kind of a, a, a literary festival on Ackle. And while I was there, I met, um, I, I was giving a talk about, you know, my experiences, and I actually um, started talking about being in Harrods when the bomb went off. And there were two other people in the room that day, it was a very small group of them. One of them was Kevin Toulis, who was a war journalist at the time, there he is. And, uh, and the other one was a gentleman, and I'm afraid I can't remember his name, um, but he had been in London at that time as well, and he was working on the buildings. And the three of us had been in the vicinity when the Harrods bomb went off. Mm -hmm. And we all had quite different experiences. Um, I had that experience of that kind of contradiction of being English and Irish at the same time. Um, and, and, and that kind of torn feeling even being at the heart of it. And then Kevin, as a war journalist, who's also second generation Irish, ran towards Harrods <laughs> because he heard a bomb went off and he just like peered in. And this other gentleman who was like an Irish builder, and they all hopped in their van and legged it out of the area. <laughs> and after that, I, be I began to just think more and more about my own identity as an Irish person and it just kind of, that was seven years ago, um, I began talking to people, getting different people's experiences, I began to research like a doctor into it, talk to other people but then during lockdown I just, I just decided it was something that I needed to write about and it ended up being um, a show and not a memoir and not a novel and not a doctor, but a, a, a really tight, it's the shortest thing I've ever written, apart from newspaper articles. Um, just this kind of tight show. And then, I don't know how I ended up performing it, but I did. <laughs> you just kind of, I, I wasn't even sure if I was going to perform it myself at first. Mm. Um, I was just going to get up and read it, and then it sort of grew. Um, I had a director that I was working with developed it and it just turned out that I really enjoyed performing it. So yeah. that's that's what happened. Very good. Um, you also have written essays from home, Am I Irish Yet? Did this yeah. come alongside at the Yeah, no, this well? is just this is just something that I've done for the show. Mm -hmm. So it's just um, a small volume of of just essays that I've written over the years just about the subject that I've I've just printed for the show. Have have you published the play text as well? Have you published the play text as well? No, I haven't published the play text, no. Busy! All right! <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, Jesus Christ! Right <laughs> I'm, I'm a husband to look after, a children to feed. I'm actually mother-like, I can't do everything. No, no, no. Well, any publishers will be 
the audience. Uh, Nick Kern books, I'm not talking to you. <laughs> um, so uh, I'm so curious that given, you know, your 11 novels, you're a New York Times bestselling yeah, yeah. novelist, was it very different for you to write a play? I've always wanted to write a play. Mm -hmm. I love it. I mean, but is it more difficult? Well, I think it's also the path that I followed as a writer because, you know, I have written lots of novels, but I also teach and I also um, I've had newspaper columns. And I think the important thing for me as a writer is always just that you do what you really, really feel is important for you to write at that time. And, um, and, and, and this was just the next thing that I needed to write about. And I was very surprised because I, I remember reading it to um, just the initial um, <coughs> script to say like just a very close group. I remember reading it to my best friend um, and her just, she, she has, she's from the same background as me, we went to school together, North London Irish, chippy. Yeah, I'm not chippy, I'm kind of more Am I Irish? <laughs> where she's a bit chippy about it, you know? And, but when I remember reading it to her and she just said, that is the best thing you've ever written. And I was like, really? Like, did you not enjoy my books? <laughs> <laughs> but she, I do feel that it's very different to anything that I've done before. But if you follow, if you're a writer or an artist and you follow a strain of authenticity, and you're fearless about it. And I think I, I could not, I, I've had this knocking around for a while, and I've never, I, I've written newspaper columns and I've always been very, about my life, and I've always been very honest and authentic in that week, you know, what's happening. But I think that I'm, you know, I'm 60 next year, and I'm just at that point where, particularly with the subject matter, I can write things that I, kind of don't give a shit, really. <laughs> you know, with how people are going to respond or if they're going to be offended or if it's the right thing or the wrong thing. And I don't feel, you know, I'm also at that point as an artist and as a person where I just think, you know, this is me. I don't mind being vulnerable. I don't mind telling people these sort of vulnerabilities that are in me because, you know, I know I kind of kick ass anyway. Do you know what I mean? Like it's not going to destroy me putting myself out there. And I think that's something that you get more and more of as you get older, that kind of deep confidence that just says, well, I'm just going to speak my truth and that's it. You know, my life is set up and now I'm just going to tell my truth. And that's my truth. So that's why I would perform this with a broken arm for two weeks. Because <laughs> I just really want to connect with people. I really want to tell this story, which I hope is the story that some that resonates with some of you. Absolutely. Do you know? That's so powerful. Um, so audience, how are you feeling? Are you feeling warmed up? You're feeling inspired? I'm seeing a lot of th oh, and here are the heads. <laughs> Back row first, please, in the middle. No, because I'm like really stupid. <laughs> <laughs> like I don't have, um, I don't have that kind of filter. Like everyone else that I knew did that, but I didn't. You know, like I was going over to Dublin for, for media parties, singing armored cars and tanks and guns. And guns. <laughs> <laughs> they were just looking at me going, "Oh my God, like where did you want come?" <laughs> like I don't have that, but I think that was the experience of a lot of people, you know, growing up. I think mm -hmm. that that was a more common, that would have been a more common sensibility in, in a lot of ways. And I, I do think it was that we chose, we chose to like 
go there or not go there. I was the one in history class going, what about Oliver Cromwell? You know, <laughs> that kind of thing. Um, and then there were other people that just didn't, you know? And did did you, anyone in your family, your brother, did he choose differently? Yeah, and Tom, did that Tom, 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 yeah, we were very like, you know, Tom was always like, he just did not like Ireland. And, and, you know, but then my sister Christine, she kind of got into it when it was cool. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? When it was all kind of like, when it all went a bit gastro. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> and then my other sister, Claire, has always had a very strong connection with Ireland. Um, but she also loves London as well. Whereas I just have always had that, had that drive to do it. And I think it's an eccentricity, like quite an extreme kind of oddity of, of mine that has enabled me to write about it so that people like you can come forward and say, I was conflicted. Do you know? And, uh, and one of the things that I think is really important is that my experience, I've been living in Ireland for a long time, so I understand Ireland now. Do you know, I really do, like I've worked in the media, I, 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 I've lived among the Irish people. <laughs> <laughs> and one of the things um, is that there is this complete um, lack of understanding or respect for people who grew up Irish in Britain and had that experience of the war in the north of Ireland here. People in Dublin did not have that experience. Mm. They did not have that conflict. They did not have that experience. Their tube was not being disrupted. There was no one planting bombs in Dublin. I think there was one. You know, we have more in common um, with it's not the same, it's not the same as people that grew up in the north by any manner of means, but it's closer to their experience than people that grew up in media circles in the South of Ireland. And I think that our experiences that, that we had growing up, I mean, you look about, you look about 25, yeah. <laughs> you look years younger than me. But I think it's a, it's um, you know, it's a, it, it was such a valid experience. I think we were the last generation of Irish people who were affected by the troubles. So do you, do you think over that, here, and yet our story has not been told. I, I read an interview with you when um, you recalled that there would be signs um, in places when you're growing up. No dogs, no blacks, no Irish. Yeah. Um, and again, yes, to kind of in, to to recall what it was like being in London as an Irish person in the eighties. It was difficult. I think the story of Irish people going over to London is a very well told story. Irish people coming over to London, you know, um, being you know, repel, being looked down on. My mother um, couldn't get a job as a teacher um, because uh, all the headmistresses are saying, oh, you're Irish Catholic, you'll go off and have loads of babies. Mm -hmm. Do you know, they wouldn't give her a job. There's that. I think that the experience of Irish people going over to London is quite well documented. Mm -hmm. I think the experience of their children mm -hmm. who are choosing Irishness or not choosing Irishness or who were brought up as Irish, but have English accents. And a lot of people, particularly of my generation and the generation, the next generation up, move back to Ireland with children from England. And it's the Irish, it's the Irish people with English accents that our experience is quite unique. But I think it's um, I think it's invalidated. Like one of the things, sorry, I have to I'm going on now. But I met, I was travelling um, to Ireland recently, and I met a 21 year old girl on the plane who has English Irish grandparents. She was going back to see her grandparents in 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 London. Her parents are second generation Irish, but identify as Irish, and they moved back to Ireland. And this little girl, this, this young woman moved to Ireland when she was five years old and she has an English accent. Mm -hmm. 
and she was really bullied in school. Mm. You know, she was called English, you're tan, do you know what I mean? Your people kind of bond us, and, and she's got like, other kids. <clears throat> so many people were friends of mine in County Mayo, Gr grew up until they were seven or eight or nine in, in, in England. And they have broad male accents mm -hmm. because the accents were just beaten out of them in school. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of an identity, do you know? And it's like that thing if you can, we were able to hide our Irishness here, do you know? And then, but the, there's also the thing of being English in Ireland. Sorry, I'm going on now. Yeah, I'm going to ask you to keep your answers a little bit shorter. Question over here. Yeah. And I've always had that conflict of am I English, British, or am I Irish? And um, I did finally get an Irish passport, so I can say mm. I am Irish, but I don't know if I am. I still have that conflict going on that, you know, I was born and brought up and I still live in London, but I feel so Irish because of the culture that I was surrounded by. I went to a Catholic convent school. I visit Ireland, I've just come back from the Wild Atlantic Way on Sunday, so <laughs> um, <laughs> worth doing, by the way, if anyone fancies it. But I just wonder, do you finally feel Irish? Uh, yeah. I feel like myself, but I, I would identify myself as Irish, yeah. Yeah, I would consider myself to be Irish. I do, because I live there, I love it there, I feel it. Do you know what I mean? I, I did this. I'm Irish author Kate Kerrigan, by the way. <laughs> so I do, yeah, I do. Do you have dual nationality? No, I just have Irish. Then you are Irish. 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 Thank you. Uh, uh, second row. So is there still discrimination in Ireland against yeah. people with English accents? Yeah, I don't think it's a big discrimination. Like, I don't think it's like, you know, we hate you, we're not going to give you a job. Mm. You know, or it's not. But I do think there is, um, yeah, I think, that, I think there's an edge to it. I think there's an element to it. And I think it's very, I mean, I think it's just that no one really talks about it. Mm -hmm. um, because, you know, we, we're Irish, we just hate the English. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, I listen to my, I sometimes I hear myself on the radio and I go, oh, who's that Upton for town bitch? Oh, hey. Do you know what I mean? It's kind of like, I think no one really, it, it's something that no one has really just like talked about, put out there. Do you know? So it's this kind of silent kind of, oh, hello. You know, it's all, it's very, it's like granular. Do you know? Because, our history is in our bones, it's in our blood. Do you know what I mean? Um, and the, the hypocrisy of it is annoying when you have someone like Biden who's like, oh, he's totally Irish. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> she's completely Irish, she's so Irish, it's just unbelievable. Um, but you know, if, yeah, if you're a plumber from Luton, you're looking for a job, so you're kind of, do you know, so yeah, I think I, it's, still, it's still there. No, it's, 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 it's on me, it's, 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 so I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. sorry. We haven't got. I'll, I'll just answer her question, saying okay. how they say, "Oh, but you're you are Irish though, because you're not like the other English people because you've lived here." So it's yeah. like you pick and choose who can be. It Irish is a bit like that. Stuff. Yeah, it's kind yeah. of. It's very. It's, yeah. yeah. I have to just say, um, Kate, that that bit in the play made me so sad when you're talking about belonging, but also kind of self hatred that you refer yeah, to yeah, there. Yeah, it's that. Yeah, but it's that kind of. It is, it's that kind of, it's in our bones. That history, it's in our bones. Do you know what I mean? It's like, you can't flick it away, you can't make it not happen. And it's just, you know, it's there. Mm -hmm. Want to give you a hug. Uh, was there a hand over here? Uh, yes. I was going to ask, 
when you do you have friends who say, oh, you're not Irish? Because I experience that a lot. You know, friends, very good friends say, oh, no, you're not. Like you've never lived in Ireland, so you're not Irish. Or, oh, if I had a baby here and it had an English accent, mm -hmm. then I'd be horrified. And, like you come across that from friends. Um, I think it's a kind of a, I just think that there's a prevalent attitude among people that live in Ireland about actual Irishness, because so many Irish people have had to leave Ireland, do you know, so the people that live there, and I think that it's a historical thing as well, it's very much like, well, you know, you went over to England, so, you know, you were able to have sex, <laughs> and, you know, um, have loads of fun, and wear mini skirts, you know, and get great jobs, and earn loads of money, but, you know, we stayed here, so you can't just come back here and say, oh, I'm Irish, <laughs> because, like, You've not, do you know what I mean? Yeah. You've not been out digging the bog every summer. Like we had. There's a bit, there's a little bit of that. And I just would, I just would call people out on it. I mean, but, you know, I say that, but I never did until now. <laughs> so that's why I want everyone to come to the show because I just want to start this movement where, you know, Ireland's biggest asset is Irishness. Right, Patrick's Day, the luck of the Irish, we're fantastic. That is Ireland's greatest export. Mm. And the people that are keeping that, that, that alive, do you know what I mean? Are people like the Redigans up there at the back, you know, doing the GAA and keeping Irishness alive over here. That's not being done by Irish people. That's being done by people here and their children and their children's children. And I want this part of this show is to try and create a home in Ireland for us, do you know? So that we feel that we have our own brand of Irishness in Ireland, not just over here. Probably contributes a huge amount of tourism as well. Yeah. Uh, okay, back row and then second row, back row. Um, similar kind of age to, to you. Can you speak up a little bit? Similar kind of age to you and what you No, I think that um, a lot of people, particularly from Mayo, have, very, ha have like very dark memories of Ireland and really love London. And that actually, that's not an uncommon experience that, that I've heard of um, the husbands wanting to go back to yes. Ireland with all their money and build a great big house in their hometown and everyone looking up and saying, oh, he's back, <laughs> do you know what I mean? And then the wives going, no, I don't want to go back there. I don't want to live in the middle of nowhere. I want to be near Marks and Spencer's and all my friends and my life. Do you know? Um, my mother um, moved back because I went back. And she's back in the family home. And she loves the new island. She doesn't go to mass. She doesn't hang out. <laughs> she doesn't hang out. You know, she's like horrified by a lot of her school peers and stuff. She doesn't have to go to mass. Everyone's gay. <laughs> she loves it. You know, she's got like, you can get a you know, you can get like a cappuccino in Balaman. It's very really <laughs> fabulous. Um, but no, for a long time, she never thought she'd go back. But now it's it's different. So I think we're nearly out of time. So I'm just going to take one more question. Is that okay, Dee? Uh, so second row, I promised you. Yes. Thank you. A wonderful show. Not a question, more a comment. And my experience, I'm from Mayo. I'm from Castlebar. Mm -hmm. My experience is the reason, I, I don't believe people, my experience is not So I grew up there, I've been here longer than I've been there, and the English person who came home, they had everything. They had the style, they had the fancy, they had this. So I think people were jealous. And I think some of that's 
still exists. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, now I'm the reverse of what you are. I'm here, and people are, you know, I went back, I'm back to Dublin for a year. I couldn't stick it. Mm-hmm. And people were like saying to me, you went there, you got your job, you got your education, stayed there. What are you doing coming back yeah. here? Mm-hmm. So the total reverse. Mm-hmm. But I the do parochial, think, The parochialism. Yeah, and I oh, sit yeah. down and I say, where am I from? What am I doing? I'm Irish to the bone. <laughs> and I was jealous of the people that were here. Yeah. And this is, you know, I, I didn't feel it was hatred. And I'm sorry to hear. No. That, you know, that's, so yeah. So I think it's really important that we all just keep talking about this yeah. stuff. I mean, I'm hoping in the next couple of years to start recording some of these stories and getting them down. And I know the WIND network is, like, really, really powerful. Do you know? Um, Oh, and what's lovely about it is that it encompasses young Irish people that have come over here and also people who are second generation Irish and that coming together of those different experiences is, it, ultimately, that's what's important is that, you know, that this conversation is happening with people in Ireland and people from Ireland over here and also their children, Do you know, people who have been brought up with Irish identities. But I have to add to that, I must say that since Brexit, surely it's the pe- those of us here in London that will be jealous of anyone with an Irish uh, connection no. and passport. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> to retain yeah. your EU yeah. citizenship. Yeah, that, yeah. That's a bonus. That's a bonus. Um, so, Kate, uh, when do you get the cast off? Oh, uh, <laughs> actually, before the last performance, oh, apparently, about two weeks' time, yeah. Mm, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we can come back and see that. So, um, Am I Irish Yet is running here at the White Bear Theatre now until the 7th of October. What happened after that? Uh, I go back to Ireland and lie down. <laughs> <laughs> I, have a few, I have a few shows. We have a few shows um, booked between now and Christmas. We're doing the Westival, which is a very, very cool kind of trendy festival, arts festival, um, in October in Westport. Mm-hmm. And I've also been booked into the Castle Bar, the Little Hall. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, and we're trying to get it, we're, we're just trying to get it up and running and, you know, and get, do, get do it up. Do you have plans to also take it to the US? Uh, yeah, maybe. You know, we're, ju- we're just, I mean, if, if people want it, do you know what I mean? But yeah, I'd love to take it to America. I would. Do you, I have family over there. Well, everyone has family. <laughs> well, do you, do you think, I, I'm curious, we have the London Irish, the Irish Irish, how different are the American Irish? They're really, really different. <laughs> they're much more, um, they're much, you know, they're much more, it's uh, like being an Irish American is a thing. Mm-hmm. We don't really, over here, we don't even have a collective name. Yeah. Like London Irish also covers like trendy kids like my son, who's come over to Ireland from Mayo and lives in London, so he's London Irish. Yeah. So the collective people who live here, um, that generational thing, we're not British Irish, we're not, do you know what I mean? So uh, Irish Americans are much more evolved <laughs> and less complicated as an Irish people. Okay. We're very complicated. <laughs> it's more interesting. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Um, I also wanted to shout out again to Dee and Kevin and the success of uh, Circus 250 in the Daring Dame series. So thank you for putting on this great show tonight. Um, we have books here that people and you are going to sign. Yes, I'm going to continue my book signing. <laughs> <laughs> Although I have, if any of you are called Blonde, could you just let me know? <laughs> <laughs> it has actually happened to me. <laughs> uh, that did actually happen to me. Are there any Blonde? Any oh, thank you. No, okay. Uh, okay, well, gen- genuinely, thank you, everyone. Thank you, Kate, Dee, Kevin, and all of you, a uh, wonderful audience. Um,